When I first started looking at nursing, there were two really big misconceptions that I had. And it stemmed from me just listening to what other people were saying. And it almost kept me away. But as I got into the nursing field and started understanding how everything worked, um, I really started to see how these two misconceptions were just nothing more than misconceptions. So today I'm just going to kind of talk about these two big misconceptions because some of you may have them and also it may be keeping you away from coming into the field. So I just want to kind of address these just from my experience and I can kind of tell you the real. So uh, welcome to my podcast. So misconception number one, and I think this was probably one of the biggest things that almost deterred me away from nursing. And I remember hearing a paramedic friend of mine saying, well, nurses just don't do anything but just stand around and take orders from doctors all day. And I kind of thought about it like, well, I just don't want to stand around and, you know, take orders. I do kind of want to use my brain. And the truth is, um, that's kind of partly true, but I want to kind of dig a little bit uh, deeper into that so you understand how the healthcare system works. First of all, everyone takes orders from doctors, and what orders are is just electronic directions for all healthcare staff. For example, if you need an MRI, it has to be a uh, has to be an order from a doctor to have an MRI. If you need to have a CT, a CT takes an order. Medications takes an order. Matter of fact, the pharmacy can't fill an order unless the order comes from a physician or someone with a um, what's called an MPI. Physical therapy that that takes an order for consult. Occupational therapy, wound consult. Even if you're discharging and you need home health services, well, home health services can't work unless there's an order for it. And in the order specifies what needs to be done. If you need anything like a walker, cane, wheelchair, any type of durable medical equipment, that takes an order. Even outpatient infusions, if you need outpatient antibiotic IV infusion or maybe like a home inotrope, that takes orders. That takes orders for the medication for the infusion and also for the home health agency nurse to come out to, to change the dressing on the central line. So all the, all actions have to have an order. The reason why it's because it's billable. That's how the hospital gets paid. So if you don't take any, if there are no orders producing, then what's going to be billable. And I think I, I realize is that as a paramedic, we took orders too, but the orders we had were standing orders, which is called protocols. The autonomy as a medic I had was being able to choose which order set to use. But the problem that I found was that as a paramedic, when I did those actions, it was not billable. And, you know, some EMS agencies, they I've seen to where they, they will literally send a bill to, to a patient because Insurance won't won't pay for a standing order, you know, especially, I mean, a protocol type deal order. So when you think about it, everything in the healthcare system revolves around a physician's order. So if you say, well, I don't know if I want to come in, you know, nursing because I just don't want to stand around and take orders all day. Um, well, that means that you're not going to be able to generate income and being able to generate income is, is, I mean, this is from business on how money is paid. So your salary is typically uh, attached to your ability to bring in money. And, you know, that's kind of partly true in business, whether if it's supply and demand or whatever. So just kind of think about that for a moment. Now, one thing I will say in the defense of that is that, um, in emergency room, it's so it's so it's so busy that you do kind of go from 
you know, task to task, from task to task. When the order is dropped, you do kind of go in and, and fulfill that order. But just understand that everything in healthcare revolves around orders from a physician. The second misconception um, that I heard before I got into nursing was that as a paramedic, you know, if you go to nursing, you lose your scope because the scope of a paramedic is way bigger than a nurse. So as being, of course, being a paramedic and a nurse, when I got into nursing, the first thing I wanted to do was kind of look at the scope. And I really couldn't find the scope meaning in nursing is different than the scope meaning in in EMS. The scope meaning in EMS all revolves around tasks and what type of, you know, actions you can do, whether if you can. And I think the big the big ones was EJIO and intubation. And the funny thing is, in the state that I'm in, I can do all three. I can do EJ. You know, I've done IOs as a nurse. Um, I can intubate um, if I, you know, I can intubate if I if I didn't have that scope restriction. But in my state, I can EJ, IJ, A line, C line, IO, intubate, and more. And I don't know where that came from because honestly, it's really depending on who you're comparing yourself to. And let me kind of dig deep into that. As a paramedic, my scope was restricted, meaning I could not do my full entire scope as a paramedic. And the agencies I worked for, uh, even though my state and even nationally, I can RSI as a paramedic, but in my EMS service, I wasn't allowed to RSI. And that's what I mean by scope restriction. Nurses are the same way. For example, if you comparing yourself to an ED nurse, a med surge nurse, L&D nurse, cath lab nurse, pre-op nurse, PACU nurse, critical care transport nurse, case management nurse, or radiology nurse, each each nurse do slightly different uh, procedures and they have a slightly different skill sets. For example, as a paramedic, if you're comparing yourself to a labor and delivery nurse, true, you know, uh, labor and delivery nurses is not probably going to do an IO. They're definitely not going to innovate. So, and I mean, you may, but if you compare yourself to a flight nurse, a pair, a 911 street medic compared to a flight nurse, I can tell you without a hands down, a street 911 paramedic scope is not bigger than a flight nurse. I can tell you that. Um, in some states, a flight nurse can put in chest tubes. So um, now if you compare in a 911 um, street paramedic to my current position right now as a discharge planner and a care coordinator uh, in my hospital where I'm, I'm at currently, I don't do any nursing care. I do all discharge planning. I can't even do an IV. So an EMT basic scope would probably be bigger than mine at this point. But a radiology nurse can place lines that a, a 911 medic can't place. Or a cath lab nurse can hang medications uh, or an ICU nurse can hang medications that a 911 medic can't hang and titrate. So think about when you mean scope. Um, and what is that? What is the meaning of your scope? In nursing, scope has a different meaning than it does as a 911 medic. So uh, just kind of kind of compare that. And also, if you really think about it, even a critical care paramedic scope is bigger than a 911 street medic scope. In some places, a 911, I'm sorry, a flight nurse and a critical care transport paramedic pretty much have the same scope aside for a couple of medications. So don't let that discourage you. People say all type of things. Sometimes it's just out of stupidity. Sometimes it's just due to a lack of knowledge. But don't let that lack of knowledge stop you from coming into the field because I can tell you as a paramedic and as a nurse, I see both sides of the picture and I can see advantages to both sides. I think as a as a paramedic, I had way more autonomy than I do as a nurse. Uh, as a nurse, uh, there's, a pick and, there's a pick and order. You know, I'm not the first to innovate. I'm not the first to do an EJ. I can do an IO, but you have physicians there. You have mid-levels, which are PAs and nurse practitioners. You have providers that are there, 
to do a lot of the more invasive procedures, whereas a paramedic pre-hospital, you're out. You are the the doctor, the PA to do the invasive procedures. So you have way more autonomy. Uh, but one of the things I can tell you is that on the nursing side, I do like the the lateral mobility, the mobility to leave, to go from the ED to pre-op, to the ICU, to care coordinating, to flight nursing, to radiology nursing. You know, you you, uh, you do have a lot of lateral mobility. So hopefully I kind of cleared up and give you a little bit more insight into some of the two biggest misconceptions that I heard before I got into the nursing field and what I've learned. So um, I'll see you guys next week. Next week. Happy nursing.